So this is a book about the misconceptions of the world and it's um, written by Hans Rosling. Right, so the world has completely changed. Today, families are small and child deaths are rare in the vast majority of countries, including the largest, China and India. There, there used to be two groups that the world used to be categorised in, developing and developed. Today, only 13 countries representing 6% of the world population are still inside the developing box. But while the world has changed, the worldview has not, at least in the heads of the Westerners. Most of us are stuck with a completely outdated idea about the rest of the world. The complete world makeover I've just shown is not unique to family size and child survival rates. The change looks very similar for pretty much any aspect of human life. Graphs showing levels of income or tourism or democracy or access to education, healthcare or electricity would all tell the same story, that the world used to be divided into two but isn't any longer. Today, most people are in the middle. There is no gap between the West and the rest, between developed and developing, between rich and poor, and we should all stop using the simple pairs of categories that suggest there is. My students were dedicated, globally aware young people who wanted to make the world a better place. I was shocked by the blunt ignorance of the most basic facts about the world. I was shocked that they actually thought there were two groups, us and them. Shocked to hear them saying that they cannot live like us. How is it even possible that they were walking around with a 30 year old world worldview in their heads? Powered pedaling home through the rain that evening in October 1995, my fingers numb, I felt fired up. My plan had worked. By bringing the data into the classroom, I could, I'd been able to prove to my students that the world was not divided into two. I had finally managed to capture their misconception. Now, I felt the urge to take the fight further. I realised I needed to make the data even clearer. That would help me to show more people, more convincingly, that their opinions were nothing more than unsubstantiated feelings. That would help me to shatter their illusions, that they knew things that really they only felt. 20 years later, I'm sitting in a fancy TV studio in Copenhagen in Denmark. The divided worldview is 20 years older, 20 years more outdated. We're live on air and the journalist tilts his head and says to me, we still see an enormous difference between the small rich world, the old western world mostly, and then the large part. But you're totally wrong, I reply. Once more, I explain that poor developing countries no longer exist as a distinct group, that there is no gap. Today, most people, 75%, live in middle income countries, not poor, not rich, but somewhere in the middle and starting to live a reasonable life. At one end of the scale, there are still countries with a majority living in extreme and unacceptable poverty. The other is the wealthy world of North America and Europe and a few places like Japan, South Korea and Singapore. But the vast majority are already living in the middle. And what do you base that knowledge on, continued the journalist in an obvious attempt to be provocative. And he succeeded. I couldn't help getting into irritated and my agitation showed in my voice and my words. I use normal statistics that are compiled by the World Bank and the United Nations. This is not controversial. These facts are not up for discussion. I am right and you are wrong. Now let's close the trap and capture the misconception. We now know that people believe that life in low income countries is much worse than it actually is. But how many people do they imagine live such terrible lives? We ask people in Sweden and the United States, of the world population, what percentage lives in low income countries? The majority suggested the answer was 50% or more. The average guess was 59%. The real figure is 9%. Only 9% of the world lives in low income countries. And remember, we just worked out that those countries aren't nearly as terrible as people think.